Humanity is losing a war against a force that no one understands. The world is dominated by massive monsters that have left people living in tiny isolated tribes unable to do anything except try to survive against an unstoppable force. The player controls a mystical hunter who has proven capable of killing these monsters, and it's now down to him to save the tribes and restore human civilization to the world. As with any game that pits a normal-sized protagonist against building-sized enemies, a head-on attack is not a wise approach. Instead, players will need to use their mobility to overcome foes. The protagonist is equipped with a tether and a glider which can be used in tandem to easily become airborne, evade attacks, and land on an opponent's body to strike at vulnerable spots. This movement style is not just theatrical, it is critical to winning fights. But the quest doesn't end when the monster falls. The player will have the opportunity to rescue people from other tribes and bring them into the player's village. The player's tribe will grow larger, stronger, and more complex over the course of the game, with the size of the village reflecting the protagonist's exploits. Visual design has become a watchword in indie games over the last few years, with developers taking steps to make their games look distinctive. Bionic Bay is a perfect example of this principle in action. The biomechanical world of Bionic Bay is surreal, disturbing, yet also very beautiful, a landscape made to be explored. But we shouldn't overlook the mechanical side. Bionic Bay is a puzzle platformer based around teleportation. The player character can swap positions with objects in the game world, an ability he must use to evade traps, cross gaps, and trigger devices as he delves into this mysterious, arcane world. In the fine tradition of sci-fi horror, Demon Spore begins with an experiment gone horribly wrong. You are a researcher at an underground laboratory playing God in an attempt to fix the world's problems at any costs. An act of sabotage results in one of the experiments breaking containment, and what began as a benevolent attempt to feed a growing population turns into a fast-growing biological mass consuming everything in its path. The main distinguishing feature is the enemy. Most twin-stick shooters, and most video games in general, feature discrete enemies that one must destroy individually. The main enemy in Demon Spore is the titular biomass, a glob of flesh that is constantly spreading and growing tentacles. The biomass reacts when damaged, healing itself and sprouting new appendages as it is damaged. The player has no hope of destroying it and must instead find a way to clear a path out of the lab. With weaponry not suited to deal with the menace swallowing the lab, the player needs to improvise using what's immediately available. That may mean sealing off doors to slow down the biomass, or even rigging equipment to cause environmental damage, buying precious seconds to escape. One of the dirty little secrets of Neo Retro games is that few of them actually look like old games. Something's always off, the animations are too smooth, the sprites too big, the palette just a little bit askew. It's always worth noting when a developer goes the extra mile to capture the aesthetic and design of a specific era. Gestalt, Steam, and Cinder is aiming to replicate the 2D platformers on the PSX, an oddly untapped font of nostalgia. Combine that with the combo-based gameplay of more modern platform fighters, and you have something that could be a wonderful synthesis of old and new.